The place to improve the world is first in one's own heart and head and hands. The past exists only in our memories, the future only. In our plans, the present is our only reality. Mountains should be climbed with as little effort as possible and without desire. The reality of your own nature should determine the speed. If you become restless, speed up. If you become winded, slow down. You climb the mountain in an equilibrium between restlessness and exhaustion. Then, when you're no longer thinking ahead, each footstep isn't just a means to an end but a unique event in itself to live only for. Some future goal is shallow. It's the sides of the mountains which sustain life, not the top. Care and quality are internal and external aspects of the same thing. A person who sees quality and feels it as he works is a person who cares. A person who cares about what he sees and does is a person who's bound to have some characteristic of quality. A person isn't considered insane if there are a number of people who believe the same way. Insanity isn't supposed to be a communicable disease. If one other person starts to believe him, or maybe two or three, then it's a religion. To live only for some future goal is shallow. It's the sides of the mountain that sustain life, not the top. In a car, you're always in a compartment, and because you're used to it, you don't realize that, through that car window, everything you see is just more TV. You're a passive observer, and it is all moving by you, boringly in a frame. On a cycle, the frame is gone. You're completely in contact with it all. You're in the scene, not just watching it anymore, and the sense of presence is overwhelming. Is it hard? Not if you have the right attitude. It's having the right attitudes that's hard. When you want to hurry something, that means you no longer care about it and want to get on too other things. The real purpose of the scientific method is to make sure nature hasn't misled you into thinking you know something you actually don't know. The only Zen you can find on the tops of mountains is the Zen you bring up there. Art is anything you can do well, anything you can do with quality. When you live in the shadow of insanity, the appearance of another mind that thinks and talks as yours does is something close to a blessed event. Every answer one finds leads to 10 more questions. The more we learn, the less we know. You are never dedicated to do something you have complete confidence in. No one is fanatically shouting that the sun is going to rise tomorrow. They know it's going to rise tomorrow. When people are fanatically dedicated to political or religious faiths or any other kind of dogmas or goals, it's always because these dogmas or goals are in doubt. In the high country of the mind, one has to become adjusted to the thinner air of uncertainty. Making an art out of your technological life is the way to solve the problem of technology. Art is anything that you can do well. Anything that you can do 
with quality. We keep passing unseen through little moments of other people's lives. Sometimes it's a little better to travel than to arrive. One of the most moral acts is to create a space in which life can move forward. The test of the machine is the satisfaction it gives you. There isn't any other test. If the machine produces tranquility, it's right. If it disturbs you, it's wrong until either the machine or your mind is changed. Today we are living in an intellectual and technological paradise and a moral and social nightmare because the intellectual level of evolution in its struggle to become free of the social level has ignored the social levels role in keeping the biological level under control. Even though quality cannot be defined, you know what quality is. You look at where you're going and where you are, and it never makes sense. But then you look back at where you've been and a pattern seems to emerge. My favorite piece of technical writing, assembly of Japanese bicycle require great peace of mind. We have artists with no scientific knowledge and scientists with no artistic knowledge and both with no spiritual sense of gravity at all. And the result is not just bad, it is ghastly. Why, for example, should a group of simple, stable compounds of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen struggle for billions of years to organize themselves into a professor of chemistry? What's the motive? Peace of mind produces right values, right values produce right thoughts, right thoughts produce right actions, and right actions produce work, which will be a material reflection for others to see of the serenity at the center of it all. The past exists only in our memories, the future only in our plans. The present is our only reality. The tree that you are aware of intellectually, because of that small time lag, is always in the past, and therefore is always unreal. Any intellectually conceived object is always in the past, and therefore unreal. Reality is always the moment of vision. Before the intellectualization takes place, there is no other reality. It's normal at this point for the fear anger syndrome to take over and make you want to hammer on that side plate with a chisel to pound it off with a sledge if necessary. You think about it, and the more you think about it, the more you're inclined to take the whole machine to a high bridge and drop it off. It's just outrageous that a tiny little slot of a screw can defeat you so totally. Communism and socialism, programs for intellectual control over society, fascism, a program for the social control of intellect. It's so hard when contemplated in advance and so easy when you do it. Quality is a direct experience, independent of and prior to intellectual abstractions. What we think of as reality is a continuous synthesis of elements from a fixed hierarchy of a priori concepts and the ever-changing data of the senses. That which destroys the old mythos becomes the new mythos. 
If a revolution destroys a systematic government, but the systematic patterns of thought that produce that government are left intact, then those patterns will repeat themselves in the succeeding government. The Buddha takes no position on gods, he suggests they may exist, or they may not, but either way you can live a moral life. If you have a high evaluation of yourself, then your ability to recognize new facts is weakened. The truth knocks on the door, and you say, go away, I'm looking for the truth, and it goes away. Puzzling. Any effort that has self-glorification as its final endpoint is bound to end in disaster. We're in such a hurry, most of the time we never get much chance to talk. The result is a kind of endless day-to-day -day shallowness, a monotony that leaves a person wondering years later where all the time went and sorry that it's all gone. The way to solve the conflict between human values and technology needs is not to run away from technology. That's impossible. The way to resolve the conflict is to break down the barriers of dualistic thought that prevent a real understanding of what technology is, not an exploitation of nature, but a fusion of nature and the human spirit into a new kind of creation that transcends both. The best students always are flunking. Every good teacher knows that. And what is good, Phaedrus, and what is not good, need we ask anyone to tell us these things? Anxiety is sort of the opposite of ego. You're so sure you'll do everything wrong you're afraid to do anything at all. It results from over-motivation leading to errors that lead to an underestimation of oneself. Work out your anxieties on paper and read. This calms the mind. Other people can talk about how to expand the destiny of mankind. I just want to talk about how to fix a motorcycle. I think that, what I have to say, has more lasting value. It is not good to talk about Zen, because Zen is nothingness. If you talk about it, you are always lying, and if you don't talk about it, no one knows it is there. Absence of quality, is the essence of squareness. Stuckness shouldn't be avoided. It's the physic predecessor of all real understanding. No one is fanatically shouting that the sun is going to rise tomorrow. They know it's going to rise tomorrow. We take a handful of sand from the endless landscape of awareness around us and call that handful of sand the world. The world comes to us in an endless stream of puzzle pieces that we would like to think all fit together somehow, but that in fact never do. Quality. You know what it is, yet you don't know what it is. It's better not to see than to see wrongly. Civilization, or the system, or society, or whatever you want to call it, is best served not by mules but by free men. Like those in the valley behind us, most people stand in sight of the spiritual mountains all their lives, and never enter them, 
being content to listen to others who have been there and thus avoid the hardships. Data without generalization is just gossip. Boredom always precedes a period of great creativity. The solutions all are simple after you have arrived at them. But they're simple only when you know already what they are. New York has always been going to hell but somehow it never gets there. That's all the motorcycle is, a system of concepts worked out in steel. When you've got a Chautauqua in your head, it's extremely hard not to inflict it on innocent people. When you look directly at an insane man all you see is a reflection of your own knowledge that he's insane, which is not to see him at all. The Buddha, the Godhead, resides quite as comfortably in the circuits of a digital computer, or the gears of a cycle transmission, as he does at the top of a mountain, or in the petals of a flower. To think otherwise, is to demean the Buddha, which is to demean oneself. The number of hypotheses available to explain any given phenomenon is infinite. It's not the nice guy, who brings about real social change. Nice guys look nice, because they're conforming. It's the bad guys, who only look nice. A hundred years later, that are the real dynamic. Force in social evolution. The Buddha can reside. In the gears of a motorcycle as easily as, in a flower on a mountaintop. To believe otherwise is to demean the Buddha, which is to demean oneself. You want to know how to paint a perfect painting? It's easy. Make yourself perfect, and then just paint naturally.